Hello, today I'm going to explain you how the logic, the logic of ASICS the currently works. So, here you see the scene, firstly, down there is the scenery, lovely, by RGOP, so if I pronounce any names wrong, um, the player, there's the enemy, which will be spa spawned by this system up here, which is, which is probably going to change, because it sucks right now, and there are two, two lovely enemy explosion and player explosions Boom. <laughs> and it looks like that when we play we have UI up here and when we hit a 5 and U we should see the game window open and enemies will come from above and we have to shoot them boom, 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 boom. Probably there are still very various ba balancing issues, but that's t we will deal with that later. So to the logic, and let's start with the easy bits. Um, this trait here is applied to the scenery, which will move every frame um, to a vector of minus this value. So it seems like you are flying forward, but you actually aren't. If you pay attention, the trees are moving because of this trait. Next we have the cursor, which looks way more complicated, but actually isn't. First it takes the coordinates of the cursor on the screen, then converts that to the coordinates in the world, so where we actually want to put our cursor. And then it should actually be possible to plug that right into the transformation of where we want our cursor to be but because this is armory and still a lot is, a lot is not working we have to do some um, calibration to actually have the cursor where it should be this is just some very simple math then every frame the cursor sets the tr transformation of our mouse next we have um, let's do the managing, it's still pretty easy. This is just some global variables all traits should be able to access. Currently there's just the damage the player does to the enemies with when hitting them once, it's 20. The damage the enemy does to you, it's 10. Next up we have shooting. Here we uh, game designer should set his the fire rate the player should is should be shooting at this is the part that makes it all work um, yes here it alternates between the two firing things the the player has the two gun models and here it's um, where the shot it's to adjust that the shots are actually fired at the position of your cursor. So it gets the transformation of your of the player, this is at the location, multiplies that with minus one, it gets the transformation of the cursor object, adds this to the trans location of the of the player, normalizes then so if if the cursor is further away from the jet it doesn't fly slower. This makes no sense because so we have to normalize it. Then it multiplies this thing by the speed the laser should be traveling at, and then applies the impulse to the before on, before spawned objects at the transformations of the two guns. It also sets the parent of these two spawned objects um, to to an empty called player lasers. It, this is important for hit recognition later on. Here we are at hit recognition. So the enemy gets all contacts in an array it has and always compares it if the parent of the, con of the object he has contact with is equal to player lasers and if it is, it removes this object he has contact with so, the la so this ha doesn't happen on the next frame and initializes the getting hit stuff it sets the, it basically Sets the variable of itself to its to the variable of itself minus the damage that has been assigned to the player damage 
um, property in the managing script we looked at before. And then if if the enemy has less health than zero or less equal health than zero, it's starting the death stuff. So this this thing here is just there to only happen it happen on the first frame the enemy is dead. So it only can die once. So it sets the visibility of its original body to zero to false, then spawns now what actually moves um, the exploding enemy, this one here, boom, and um, to the position he was bef in before, then plays the exploding action, pauses the action, so this is to, to be there to be possible that it can happen again moves the move the exploding enemy back down somewhere and now it should be should be removing the enemy so it's gone but it doesn't so we need to have to wait until this animation is finished and remove it again i don't know why it's just i'm um, being crazy again <coughs> sorry next is how we die ourselves this is pretty similar and again, we get the context of ourselves in our way. Now we have a little bit different setup because it's the work and I had to change the other one. So I don't know why for a new update of Armory. And I don't want to change it because it works. <laughs> it basically always puts out this thing here when it gets hit. Then it um, sets its health to the health minus the damage the enemies do here then once the, it gets different once it, the health is zero or less it sends the global event being that it was killed once it was killed it initializes the minus one credit reaction when we take a quick look at this yes this setup here is also that it ha only happens once on the first frame and then it sets like the enemy um, its visibility to zero set the transformation from the exploding player boom um, to its count allocation play the exploding action pause it again move it back somewhere then also it sets the visibility of those two no? those two thrusters to zero so we don't want to have them when we die so at this point we are basically invisible So, when you get killed, it also sets the health variable here back to 100, waits a second, then sets the visibilities of the player and the thrusters back to true, back to true, sorry. And this is also there to make everything only happen once. Then we also have it, this um, thing here. This is there you can have these three credits, so you can only die three times and then the game is over. And this here is once you get killed, it sets the amount of credits to itself minus 
one and once you the this world which is zero it sends the game over um, event which triggers the dash death sequence again but in the end the game shuts down also the the credits are a global property oh my god oh yes i just <laughs> Also, the credits are global property, so we can com adjust the UI after it, according to it. Sorry. So every time we have minus one credit, we check how many credits are being there with this, and set the visibility of your current credits. Uh, turn them off accordingly, and then these things will disappear. Also, this health slider, if you saw it while playing. It's adjusted while playing. This works because the um, HP var variable is also a global property, which is being divided by 100. And then the scale of this actually just plain is set accordingly to its amount. Then we have laser still you shoot and the enemies too. They, these are just being grooved two seconds or whatever this this number here means um, after they were spawned. It's just a time variable. Next what is Oh, the enemies can also shoot. This looks a little bit messy, but don't worry. This is here just the fire rate, just because the fire rate of them is a little bit more random. Then we have the same mechanism as in the shooting trait of your own player. It spawns the lasers at the transform of their guns, gun empties. But also, they only shoot when they are not hitting an another one of their. Wait. Also, they are only shooting when they are not hitting themselves, which would be kind of stupid. And then they also shoot, spawn and shoot the lasers in the direction of the jet, but it's a little bit randomized because a ra random vector is being added to the, it. Here's the laser speed again, it's normalized, multiplies, impulse applied, and then the, its parent is set to emulator, so the hit recognition works for the player. Then we have just a very small trade for ship explosions, so by default um, we place the animations immediately in a loop, so this pauses them on, when the game started, so when you die the explosion doesn't start mid-animation. And what is left? The spawner of the enemies, it's currently just placeholder, it, it's going to be very different, but I don't know how. We're gonna have to discuss this in the firm. I have actually never played such kind of games before. <laughs> so it's that's just a shooting mechanism again with a random very a little bit random variable at when the enemies are being spawned. Once it's spawned once it's being spawned, it's spawned at the transform at one of those three spawning locations. And every time it's spawned it's the index of which spawning location to use is being hit, made plus one and if it's five it's being reset to zero so it always cycles through it so first enemy second enemy fourth fifth 
six, or I can't count, then the seventh enemy and next so on, it always loops through like that. And then in the end the enemies are being set to parent of enemies because they are really um, Oh, they take a lot of place in the debug console, so I can hide them pretty easily. And this, I'm missing, yes, there's the jet controls, so you actually move the jet left. And once you press down the left mouse button, it rotates them, the, the player around by this value. The right, once you press the right mouse button down, it rotates them by the negative of this value. When you press A on your keyboard and you don't press left mouse button at the same time, um, you will fly usually in this direction. Once you press the same, well, it's at the same time as you press left on your mouse, it flies there faster in this in the A direction, so left. And when you press A while the right mouse button is down on your mouse, you fly there slower than usual. The same is true for when you press D on your keyboard, but just with, every, with the slow and fast thing in opposite directions. So last, if you press S, you fly backwards a little bit, and W, you fly forwards a little bit faster. And also, always when you press W, you, the action of the thrusters being played, once it's done, pauses them so they don't play all the time. When you also not playing, pressing W, sorry. Then to don't let the jet rotate something like this, because physics are all wonky. The transform of the jet is, is being get, it's the rotation extracted, the and only the y um, value is taken and set to it again every time and all the others and x and z values are set to zero so it actually will always be set the rotation of the jet will always be set to zero apart from y so it only can rotate on the y axis that should back basically be all of it